Well, probably ought to get started. Uh, as you could tell, my name is Todd Hatfield with HECO Industrial Service Groups. I'm uh, Vice President of Engineering and Repair. Been involved with the company from the time that about 1980 all the way to now. Graduated from college in 1985, electrical engineering. Uh, from that point, I was involved. We had a coil manufacturing division, HECO Coil. Was involved with that, managing that, and managing uh, the uh, repair facility and doing engineering. So, kind of had did a lot of things over a period of time. Um, but my background primarily now is repairing, solving problematic motor designs, improving motor designs, uh, giving customers ideas on how to take a problematic motor and make it better. And most of the time being able to do that with the existing motor. But to begin, I wanna talk about just the basics of magnetism to get everyone back on track. Uh, indu an induction motor operates on the basis of magnetism uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, a permanent magnet in this case has lines of flux or, or lines of magnetism you can't see. Uh, and unlike poles attract, like poles repel. And believe it or not, that's how an induction motor works in simplicity. Uh, law of electromagnetic induction, this is Faraday's law. And you have to have three things uh, to have induction work, you have to have a magnetic field. In this case, we have a permanent magnet. You have to have a conductor or a coil, and you have to have motion. So as you move the permanent magnet into or towards the coil, you actually create uh, magnetic flux, which produces voltage in the coil. Same concept with an induction motor. Um, we'll get through this relatively quickly. Alternating current. Another thing that came around in the late 1800s, there's arguments on actually who came up with it, but independent of that, the concept of having a positive and a negative <clears throat> direction in a, in a cycle. So in the United States, we're all aware that 60 hertz is our frequency, 60 cycles per second, which equals hertz. One cycle per second equals one hertz. One cycle travels uh, 360 electrical degrees. Simple uh, construction. This construction essentially is the basis for all induction motors, the, the drawing uh, representing the, the stator or the stationary part, the rotor and the rotating part. Uh, the rotor rotates and drives the shaft, which actually does the work. Principles of magnetism are occurring. Um, if you progressively change the polarity through the alternating current, you change the polarity of the stator poles and that rotor is, is gonna be inductively pulling along and following that stator. To further this, uh, in this example, we're showing, um, we're showing north pole on the stator at A1 and C2 south pole at C1 and A2, a little bit complicated in the numbering sequence, but notice the rotor is south, unlike poles attract, the rotor is following the stator or the rotating magnetic field. Time two, the same thing, it continues to follow and you'll know that south pole is continuing following the, the north pole as it's rotating around. Time three and four, the rotor continues to rotate and follow the stator. So the magnetic field of the stator is what we call a rotating magnetic field. It's rotating. The rotor is forced to rotate with it or be pulled along. Basic induction motor. Current flow in the rotor is caused from mag magnetic induction. Um, current flowing in the rotor creates a magnetic field around each bar. The stator magnetic field rotates from three phase power. The stator field pulls the rotor magnetically, some of the things we've been talking about. And then through that process, it's driving the shaft and it's rotating. And that's the principle. 